Hey, look, we have a new menu screen. Well, sort of, some of it is, a bit on the right. Uh, I guess this is representing that we're on the path to the true pacifist, because we just uh, uh, bonded uh, Undyne and Althus. And Papyrus called afterwards, sounding very suspicious, um, but telling me to go back to Althus' lab. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a mini rant <laughs> uh, in reply to one of Subprogram's uh, comments. Sorry, Subprogram. Um, <laughs> it was mainly about the detail in um, uh, in Metaton's fights, and I guess just in generally in all of the fights, and like it's just the idea that. Like it's very, it just reminds me of point and click adventure games where you have to try everything with everything before you like see everything. And so it's hard for me to appreciate that fully as a, a thing to like about the game because the average player wouldn't see it all. And, and it, it was mentioned, the program said like, um, like, but the, you know, the one of the interesting things about that is the surprise fact of like if you do do something a bit out of the ordinary it might have some particular interaction that ends up surprising you and that is fun and that's true that is good um but i think it's it slightly conflicts with at least for me i think part, partly this is to do with the fact that i the first time round i played a mostly pacifist run and didn't honestly by the end of it didn't expect to not get a good ending because i felt like it was mostly played the right way um but because it's encouraging me to replay the game and, and apparently I, I think i'm remembering correctly you have to play the game anyway for a second time even if you do do a fully pacifist run because that wouldn't count as a true pacifist run i think that's right so either way the game's kind of suggesting you should play it again and and therefore like experience some more of these details these different things that you could have done that you didn't do last time but there's two issues with that. One is the 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 it's not it's not obvious until you do a thing what that thing might do, um, which in itself is okay. You could do the the point and click thing where you just you just try lots of things and see what happens, and that's kind of fun. Uh, but at the same time, in these fights, you're trying not to die, and these two things conflict a lot. Like I can't experiment if I'm avoiding dying. Especially with a save system that sends me back potentially, like it doesn't tend to send you back far, but like you can lose a decent amount of progress. So there's a bunch of things that don't quite fit together well. There, like it's it's especially weird considering the game is clearly about, well, well at least part of it is about the conflict in most RPGs between like violence and being the good guy, and. And you'd think a game that's sort of about conflict in video games would recognize when it has its own conflicts, but it seems like in this case it's just a it's just a it's just been missed. Like it's trying to do a few interesting things, but some of the things don't work well together, I guess, is what I would say. That's not to say I don't like the game though. And I was mainly ranting before because um I had just lost my one and a half hours of Puddle Knights uh footage. Uh, if you see the previous yesterday's video from Puddle Knights, I don't know which one it is, part five, part six, something like that, um, you'll see I uh, was basically replaying some puzzles because I lost loads of footage, so that made me a bit more ranty. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that's what am I doing? What I was going to see is if there's anything going on at Undyne's house now, but uh, Papyrus did just call me and send me, I guess, I guess this is just on fire. Yeah. Um, that's my house. Or oh, it was my house until we set it on fire. But hey, can't say I've never done, done that before. <laughs> um, so Papyrus was sending me towards Alpha's house, but I've been warned about something. I guess we'll see when we get there. Uh, is there anything I want to do? I don't think so. Uh, Keep expecting to just be able to walk onto that without, and then the talking would happen from me walking onto it rather than me having to talk directly. Uh, so let's go to Hotlands. 
I appreciate that they put the uh, boat or the docks near the most important locations. I'm having a little concert. Cool. Strange that we always go left to get to wherever we're going. Come again sometime. Tra -la -la. Maybe it's a maybe there's just a big loop, and we just keep going round and round, and we can't turn around for some reason. I guess the cat boat can't turn around. Um, sure. <laughs> I just feel uh, like I have to save every time I see one of these. Okay, so I believe this bit's okay. It was suggested that if I walk through a door, then there's no turning back. Uh, inside here, not that door, a different door. And the only door I can remember is the bathroom door. So it's probably that. Okay, there's a note on the floor. It's a note from Alphys. Read it. It's hard to read because of the handwriting, but you try your best. Hey, thanks for your help back there. You guys, your support really means a lot to me. But as difficult as it is to say this, you guys alone can't magically make my own problems go away. I want to be a better person. I don't want to be afraid anymore. And for that to happen, I have to be able to face my own mistakes. I'm going to start doing that now. I want to be clear. This isn't anyone else's problem but mine. But if you don't ever hear from me again, if you want to know the truth, enter the door to the north of this note. You all at least deserve to know what I did. That's all she wrote. What? Okay, that's sounding more dramatic than I'm expecting at this point. I'm going to read that again. And the handwriting's all bad. Wait, is it not actually from Alphys? Doesn't like... Papyrus have terrible handwriting or something. Thanks for your help back there. You guys, just what really means a lot to me. I guess it would it would probably be in Papyrus's font if uh, <laughs> if it was if it was written by him. But as difficult as just to say this, you guys alone can't magically make my problems go away. Like things were not too bad at the end of that that uh, role play date. Like Undyne sure sent uh, sent them out jogging, but. Come on, why are you being so dramatic? I want to be a better person. I don't want to be afraid anymore. For that to happen, I have to be able to face my mistakes. Okay. Uh, but I think I should not go through the door. Because that locks me out. Instead, it's been suggested that I should go and fight um, Asgore. Uh, and I can't remember exactly what happens after that. Um, doesn't that end the game? I guess not. I guess I can fight Asgore and then leave. Uh, also, because Flowey's not around this time... Well, Flowey is around this time. Hmm. Curious. In fact, I've only seen Flowey pop up once, didn't I, during this playthrough? Whereas I think last time I saw him much more often. Um, okay, let's go. I think there's two things I'm supposed to do. One is go to the hotel and do a phone call. Is it left for three? I just remember that it's, you go left, right, left, right, and then I think on the last floor you go right, left. Uh, wait, do I have to walk through this area? Hold on, when I come out of the hotel, what's south of the hotel, is it here? I don't remember. No, it's not this, I definitely don't go through this. Wait. Wait a second, can I just take these now? There's nobody here. Oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay, no, sadly not. There's probably a spider in that web. A little mini spider. Wait, where do I go? Or am I being silly? Hold on, Hotlands. There's nowhere else to go to on the boat. You're going to go backwards on the boat. Was it just here? No, it was just here. Okay. I must have been misremembering. Or maybe you go right, left, right, left, left, right. Okay, that's probably what it was. Yeah. Okay. So, I think I w want to be... Let's do it. I always do. Ah! Okay, I'm doing it twice. There we go. Um... Let's call Papyrus here. Careful, I've heard that hotel has a dog problem. Oh, no pets allowed, huh? I'm not talking about pets. What's the problem? Problem is, dog. 
What's wrong with dogs? <laughs> Specifically dogs. Not all dogs, just that one. Indeed. What's wrong with it? Everything. Okay. <laughs> oh. Crap. Something, something. The f oh no, I just missed a message. What did it say? Something, it said something about the flower. The flower is my friend. I mean, if having an imaginary friend makes you happy... Oh my god, he's not imaginary, he has a name! What's his name? Fl flowery? <laughs> oh my god, you just made that up. Okay, I did, but he's really... he's real? He's real, okay. So you hate this dog, but like weird talking flowers. The flower is my friend. Okay, so that's the, that's what the message was that I missed. Okay. If having an imaginary friend makes you happy... Okay. That is interesting. Don't know if I get anything else out of here. Um, yeah, it was. I remember it being brought up earlier that um, uh, Papyrus had, well, at least believed he had an imaginary friend, the flower. I think I can get a cinnamon bun from outside, but I don't know if I care to. I'm pretty sure I did that last time. Um, <laughs> okay, now let's just head towards... Where do things go? Oh, this goes... this skips. No, it doesn't. It's uh, the elevator's further on. Okay, yep. I remember. Hmm. Yeah, I don't fully know what Flowey's business is. Like, Flowey... Just turns up, follows me around. Uh, I, well, I guess I sort of know from the last playthrough. Um, Flowey's pretty destructive at the end. Uh, what am I doing? Through here. Yes, I might save here. Why is Flowey following Papyrus around? I don't know. There's a bunch of unknown questions there for sure. Not unknown questions, questions with unknown answers. Okay. I quite like this bit of the game as well. The music's good and the way they're telling the story is good, so I, this is pretty cool. Happy to play this again. Another save point. So many save points. Ah, okay. <laughs> For some reason I exited, but I had it in my mind already that I had to save a second time, and so I did. Where does this one go? Oh, this one goes to the other side, right? I don't think I can go through it yet. The elevator's in use. Okay. Here we go. The problem with Asgore is going to be that uh, I believe to beat Asgore, you have to take him down to low health and then spare. Um, but I am I have very little health and like items and stuff. I might have to go back and get stuff if I'm struggling. And like, my attack isn't very strong. Here we go. It's the exciting music. New home. Hey, it's Flowey. As well with the scrap box books now to make tea. Gardening tools. Are they not like what do you call it? Like fire poker things? A long time ago, a human fell into the ruins. Injured by its fall, the human called out for help. This is a pretty good track. The fridge is full of unopened containers of snails. Right first between the drain. So that's how do you help yourself to anything you want? Like it's a trash can. It's full of crumpled up recipes for butterscotch pie. Oh. Do you reckon Asgore is trying to make butterscotch pie but can't do it without Toriel? And only Toriel knows how to do it very well. Sad. Maybe they should get back together. It's a great reading chair, but it doesn't seem like anyone uses it. Azrael, the king's son, heard the human's call. He brought the human back to the castle. I like how 
the game wants the monsters to explain the story to me, but the only, uh, the only like way of depicting the monsters, at least most of the monsters, some of the monsters do stand around in the world, but m most of them only appear in fights. So it's obviously just putting me into a fight so it can draw them at the top and not feel out of place. It's called a flower, it's called a flower. It's a heart shaped block inside the box, we take it, sure. One dagger, okay. I guess that stuff might help. Defense 15. What do I currently have? Uh, cloudy glasses 5. Okay, might as well do that. Although, doesn't the cloudy glasses give me uh, something else? I really have very few food items right now, so this might be quite tricky. I might have to go back. Uh, increases inv. Is that my invincibility when I'm like hurt? Hmm, what do I prefer? Yeah, okay. Invulnerability. Uh, I should probably be calling Papyrus a bit as well. Whoops. Let's go back and do that as a bit. Uh, and one dagger compared to the pan. I heal better. Ah, that's quite tempting. Attack 10 compared to 15. I might keep the burnt pan. What a comfortable bed. If you lay down here, you might not ever get up. Is this the kids' room? As rule on the new human. The first human, not the new human. New home, first human. It's a drawing of a golden flower. It's a family photograph. Everyone is smiling. Maybe Flowey is as real. I don't know. That's the kind of thing that fantasy stories like this do. <laughs> this person's not dead. They're just this other character that's nothing like them. There are a lot of striped shirts in here. It's a twin sized bed. Also, the toys next to the bed. Those are like, they're like little mini Azreels. Dusty toys. Hmm. Interesting. Let's call Papyrus in here. Oh. Come on, Papyrus, this is like the most interesting part of the game. You've got nothing to say? Under renovations. Oop. Over time, Azriel and the human became like siblings. King and Queen treated the human child as their own. The underground was full of hope. Took the key and put it on your phone's keychain. It's trophy number one, nose nuzzle champs, 98. It's a king size bed, of course. And I think in the previous in old home it was a queen size bed maybe i think that was the the joke there not joke but the little hint it's a clothes drawer there are robes button up shirts and a pink hand knit sweater that says My mr dad guy it's a bureau there's a santa claus outfit inside it's article's journal all the current page says is is nice day today i think it's still almost wet Macaroni art of a flower for King Dead. Despite everything, it's still you. It's a golden flower. Hmm. Wait, did they go in this room? Oh no, I see. Room under renovations. Uh, is that Toriel's room? Interesting. Maybe. I feel like there would have been a room where I could have called uh, Papyrus and Papyrus would have said something like, I can't call anymore. So I feel like maybe walking back a little bit? Maybe here? No. Or maybe this still counts as being part of the core, and so it's still that effect. Yeah, that might be it, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna struggle, aren't I, with this fight? Uh, yeah, let's just go. Do I, have key Do I have the keys in my... No, they're just like, sort of, transient. You unlock the chain. It's an old calendar from the end of 21X. Data circle on it. How do people say that? Um, do you say 21X or 
16. <lacht> oh, 20. ZX? Was sind denn heute? Ah, da, Then, one day, the human became very ill. The sick human had only one request, to see the flowers from their village. But there was nothing we could do. Right, because you can't cross the barrier unless you've got a human soul and a monster soul. Next day, the next day, the human died. Azriel, wrecked with grief, absorbed the human's soul. He transformed into a being with incredible power. With the human soul, Azriel crossed, the, crossed through the barrier. He carried the human's body into the sunset, back to the village of the humans. Azrael reached the center of the village. There he found a bed of golden flowers. He carried the human onto it. I wonder why the bed of golden flowers seemed to end up back... Um, like it's at the start of the underground. It's in the ruins. Is it just like symbolic? Suddenly screams rang out. The villagers saw Azrael holding the human's body. They thought that he had killed the child. Yeah, big mistake. The humans attacked him with everything they had. He was struck with, with blow after blow. Azrael had the power to destroy them all. Stupid humans. But Azrael did not fight back. Clutching the human, Azrael smiled and walked away. Wounded, Azriel stumbled home. He entered the castle and collapsed. His dust spread across the garden. The kingdom fell into despair. The king and queen had lost two children in one night. The humans had once again taken everything from us. Stupid humans! The king decided it was time to end our suffering. Every human who falls down here must die. With enough souls, we can shatter the barrier forever. That's not what Azrael would have wanted, Asgore. And this is what broke Toriel and Asgore apart. It's not long now. King Asgore will let us go, give us hope, save us all. You should be smiling too. Aren't you excited? Aren't you happy? You're going to be free. Ah. Ah, that's just the elevator, okay. Last corridor. where Sans shows up again, right? Just like in the first scene when we were both silhouettes. Very um, cyclical. So you finally made it. The end of your journey is at hand. In a few moments, you will meet the king. Together, you will determine the future of this world. Like, you don't need to pretend, I, I can tell who you are, you don't need to, like, your font, can, <laughs> you can use your normal font. That's then. Now, you'll be judged. You'll be judged for your every action. You'll be judged for every EXP you've earned. What's the EXP? It's an acronym. It stands for Execution Points, a way of quantifying the pain you have inflicted on others. When you kill someone, your EXP increases. When you have enough EXP, your love increases. Love, too, is an acronym. It says for level of violence, a way of measuring someone's capacity to hurt. The more you kill, the easier it becomes to distance yourself. The more you distance yourself, the less you will hurt. The more easily you can bring yourself to hurt others. 
But you, you never gained any love. Of course, that doesn't mean you're completely innocent or naive, just that you kept a certain tenderness in your heart. No matter the struggles or hardship you face, you strive to do the right thing. You refuse to hurt anyone. Even when you ran away, you did it with a smile. You never gained love, but you gained love. <laughs> Does that make sense? Maybe not. Now, you're about to face the greatest challenge of your entire journey. Your actions here will determine the fate of the entire world. If you refuse to fight, Asgore will take your soul and destroy humanity. But if you kill Asgore and go home, monsters will remain trapped underground. What will you do? Well, if I were you, I'd have thrown in the towel by now. But you didn't get this far by giving up, did you? That's right, you have something called determination. So as long as you hold on, so as long as you do what's in your heart, I believe you can do the right thing. All right, we're all counting on you, kid. Good luck. And he's gone. Here we go. So it's not... It doesn't... It doesn't uh, lock me out of going back if I fight Asgore. I'm going to trust you, Colin. You told me to do this. Um, before, I, uh, before I do... This is where the... Um, coffins are. Right? Is this going to be any different? No, this is the same. It's a coffin. There's a name engraved on it. Joe. It's empty. Ah, that's terrifying. <laughs> okay, Asgore time. <laughs> 